Hello, and welcome to section 1.3 of chapter 1 on exploring data. We're going to be looking at describing quantitative data with numbers, and we'll do this over two days. Today will be day one. And here are the learning objectives for this section. We'll calculate measures of center, so we're going to think of measures of center, uh, and we should be familiar with both the mean and the median from previous courses. We're going to learn how to calculate and interpret measures of spread, specifically the range. Uh, that's the max minus the minimum. The IQR will be something new that we'll learn. And then standard deviation as well uh, will be a new uh, calculation we'll learn. We're going to choose the most appropriate measure of center and spread in a given setting. So we'll know when do we use these different, you know, when do I use the mean versus the median? When do I use the range versus the IQR or the standard deviation? We're going to look at a rule. Uh, it's called the 1.5 IQR rule. Uh, so we have to first learn IQR in order to apply this rule. We're going to learn about box plots. Uh, that's a, another type of data, uh, uh, graphical display of quantitative data. So we'll learn how to create those. And then be able to use appropriate graphs and numerical summaries to compare distributions of quantitative data. So kind of know when to use what graph when and what numbers when. So we'll go kind of quickly through this first part here because this should be review from previous courses. And uh, the most common measure of center is the ordinary arithmetic, arithmetic average, or we refer to that as the mean. Now we do have an abbreviation for that. That's our abbreviation right there. And it's print, we say this is called X bar. All right, so, and uh, from previous courses, again, you know to find the average or the mean, you add up all the observations and divide by the number of observations. Okay, so to find that again, sum of observations divided by the number of observations. So in other words, you'd add up each of the individual x's in your list and then divide by the number of those x's in your list. Okay. So if we have a little shorter notation to write that. Uh, the uh, capital Greek letter sigma. Okay, this is called sigma. Uh, is this symbol means, if you see that in mathematics, generally means to add them all up. So therefore we can write the formula as this. To find the mean, we add all of the individual x's, we add them all up, and divide by the number that we have. Another common measure is the median. One you should be familiar with as well too. I always think of the median of the highway. The median of the highway is right in the middle of the, the roadway between the two different roads going north, south, east, west, or what have you. Uh, so the median is the midpoint of a distribution. So it's such that half are above, half the observations are smaller, and the other half are larger. So it kind of splits the data in two. Okay, so to find that median, you're going to first always have to list the data from smallest to largest. Okay, so order the data. That's kind of the important thing is to order the data. Get that done first. And then if you have an odd number, if you have an odd number of data points, well, you'll like, the median will actually be a part of the list. Uh, it'll be the middle, the center observation. Okay. If the number of observations is even, so if you've got an even number of data points, well, you're going to end up with two numbers in the middle. Okay, so you have two center observations in that list. So what you're going to have to do is just add those up and divide by two. So in other words, you're finding the average of those two center observations to determine the median. So that in that case, the median uh, may not be in your original list. Okay, so here's kind of an example here. This is data below here, uh, about 20 randomly selected New York workers and their commute times. So if you want to find the mean, Again, just add them all up, divide by 20, because we've got 20 uh, uh, New Yorkers selected, and there is simply our mean. Okay. To do the median, you should probably order the list, and here we've got a little practice with the stem and leaf plots. You know, so we got this first score here is 5, 10, 10, 15, 15, 15, 15, 20, 20, etc., all the way down here to 85. So you can count from the outside in. Uh, or knowing that there's 20 selected here, you can count in 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And backwards 10 as well, too. So you end up with those two numbers in the middle, which are 20 and 25. So to find the median, you have to have to add them up, divide by 2, to find that median value. 
measuring spread. Right? So just measuring sent alone can be misleading. You want to be concerned about how spread out the data is. So we're going to look at some useful numerical uh, values that will help us uh, measure spread. And the first one we're going to look at are quartiles and then the IQR. Quartiles are sort of like what they sound like. If you think about the word quarter, quarter is worth 25 cents. It's 25% of the way to the final value. So maybe think of that as a help, helpful hint. So when we calculate quartiles, again, we're still going to arrange the observations in increasing order and locate the median. So again, do the same kind of process you did for the median, uh, listing it from least to biggest. Okay. The first quartile, the Q1, Q1, the first quartile, is the median of the observations located to the left of the median. And I like to think it's always the middle of the lower half. The third quartile, abbreviated Q3, is the median observations located to the right of the median, or like I like to think of, is it's the median of the upper half of the data. So to define the IQR, IQR stands for interquartile range. It's simply just taking the Q3 minus the Q1 and getting that value. Well, let's look at how this is in practice here. So here's those 20 times for New Yorkers again, their travel times or commute times to work. So first things first, we should always order that data. Okay, so order it from smallest to largest. Okay. What we can do is locate uh, the median. Again, so we got right here, uh, the median is going to be in between here because we got two values here in the middle. Uh, so uh, our median is going to be that 22.5. Okay. Our first quartile and our third quartile then are the middle of that bottom half. So again, here's our median. That's in between here. So we're not going to include that value. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll look at this bottom half and look at the middle of this. Now again, this bottom half has 10 data points, so we're going to have an even number. So we'll have two numbers in the middle. This one's pretty easy to calculate. The middle between 15 and 15 is simply just 15. Up in the top here, you've got the 10 values that are, oops, I'm sorry, should have gone right here, uh, from here here, because the median is 22.5, so we don't use this one, but we use the first value here. So uh, this should be the 22.5, uh, or 25 through the 85 uh, for our upper half. And again, we'll have two values in the middle here. So now we have to find the median of the uh, mean of these two values right here to find that middle, which is 42.5. So again, don't use this uh, as a data point. Uh, so we got the top half and the bottom half. The 22.5 is in the middle of those two. So don't use that in calculating the Q1 and the Q3. Okay. And then to find our IQR, simply to subtract the Q3 minus the Q1 and we'll get an IQR 27.5 minutes. Okay. Interpretation is we say the range of the middle half of travel times in New Yorkers is the sample of the area in the sample is 27.5 minutes. Okay. Well, in addition to serving as a measure of spread, the IQR is used as part of a rule of thumb for identifying outliers. So we talked about outliers earlier being just away from the group of data. Now we're going to put a little mathematical rule to that. We're going to get the 1.5 IQR rule. That's right, so 1.5 times the IQR. So in the previous problem, we found that the Q1 was 15, the Q3 is 42.5, and that calculation for the IQR is 27.5 minutes. Well, if we take 1.5 times that IQR, we get 41.25. Well, now we've got to do is find out values that are further away. So we'll take that Q1 value. The Q1 was 15. So we have that 15 right here. And we want to see, you know, are there scores that are 1.5 IQRs away from that? So take 41.25 since 15 is that lower value. And we're going to look at, is there anything smaller than 15? Uh, that's 41.25 units smaller than that. Well, we'd have to have a value that's negative 26.25. And that data set didn't have any negative numbers in it, so uh, we know we don't have any outliers on the left side because we don't have any values less than less than this value. 
We also do the same thing with the on the Q3 side. What we'll do is we'll look to see is there anything is there anything significantly bigger or further away from the Q3, and we take the Q3, which was 42.5, and then we'll add. We're going to look to see is there anything further beyond that Q3 uh, that's larger than that by more than 41.25. So if we add that together, we get this, and then we're going to look for any values that are more than. 83.75 on our list, and if there are, those would officially become an outlier. All right, so there's a summary of what I just said. So when I look at that original data set, the lowest value is 5. We certainly don't have anything less than negative 26.25 in our data set. Uh, we do have a value here at 85 that is larger than uh, the Q3 plus the 1.5 IQR. This 85 is officially an outlier because it is more than 1.5 times the IQR away from the Q3. Well, there's another thing called the five number summary. And uh, we know about the minimum and the maximum values in a data set. And the difference between those two is called the range. But we want to look at what's also called the five number summary. And the five most important numbers are the minimum which again is your smallest number, the maximum, which is your biggest number. Well, we know how to calculate the median. That's our middle number, which may or may not be part of the data set. And same thing with Q1 and the Q3. We now know how to kind of calculate those too, and those may or may not be part of the data set as well. But those five numbers put together give us a pretty good summary um, of the spread of data. Okay, so It'd be nice to have a little graphical display of this, and we call that a box plot, sometimes also called a box and whiskers plot. So how do we make that? Well, what we do is we make a central box that's drawn from the first quartile to the third quartile. And we'll take a look at this in the next slide on how to make this. We'll make a line in the middle of the box to mark the median, and then we'll make lines so called whiskers. That's why sometimes it's called a box and whiskers plot extended from the box out to the smallest and largest observations that aren't outliers. Outliers are usually marked with an asterisk or a, a star or an X. Don't have to be too fancy. So let's look at how to do this. Let's look at how we construct a box plot. So again, here's our original data. Again, always order that. From before, remember that we did uh, uh, you know, have the median uh, that was right here at the 22.5. Our Q1 was here at the 15, and our Q3 was at that 42.5. So to make a box plot, we're going to make a horizontal uh, scale uh, that covers from our smallest to our largest. You can always go a little bit bigger just to give yourself a little space. This data goes from 5 to 85, so it just made a scale from 0 to 90. Okay, and now we're going to put those five points, uh, those five uh, important points from the five number summary into that graph as talked about earlier. So we're going to first, after identifying all those pieces, we're going to make our box. So again, our box, the 15, the 22.5, so the 15 is right here, the 22.5 right here, there's our median, and the 42.5. So it's kind of like what I like to do first, is just kind of draw those lines at those different values, and then I can make my box. Then, uh, what's important to do is look at that minimum. Uh, that minimum is going to go out to 5, and we'll end up drawing a little whisker to that. Now, the maximum is 85, but now remember this 85 was an outlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line out to the next value. This 85 is an outlier, but the 65 is not. So you draw a line here out to the 65, stop it there, and then we're just going to make a little asterisk here at 85. And you can see this is what's kind of done on the slide. Well, for right now that should be good enough uh, to get you going. Um, and you should be able to do the homework assignment from this first section of 1.3 uh, on uh, lesson uh, or day one. Okay. And I'll quickly see if we can get this in here before the PowerPoint ends. And there's your assignment. All right, good luck.